Yeah, okay, we're live. Welcome to uh, My Mate's Creative Podcast. Uh, I'm going to skip what we do this week. Uh, <laughs> three mates talking creatively um, with Andy violently hitting the mouse button. In yeah, the sorry, I'm trying to get uh, that, out, that out of my face. Get it out of your face, lad. So, yeah. I go, Hot right, topics, I'm, what are we talking about? <laughs> I'm going to go straight in with the, the, a question which basically I wanted to talk about like how art is consumed, basically how, uh, you know, different types of art and how they're consumed. But my, the, what got me thinking about this question this week was, and I'll, st- I'll start probably makes more sense to start with you, Dave, but like, are you, do you feel happy with how your art generally is consumed? Because... <clears throat> So most of your art that you that you do, which is like your your the the big part of your income, is yeah. is events based art, and yeah. so you're like it's kind of like uh, almost like a corporate sort of commodity. Yeah, uh, these, these guys <clears throat> or people, I know a lot of a lot of the earnings of your paintings, which do sell for a lot, goes mm. towards charity. But do you, would you do you think you'd be happier? I mean, it's a bit of a big question, but do you think you'd be happier if like you know it, it was being bought? out of a gallery or do, or do you not really care uh i don't know if i compare it to i don't know if the opposite is to what i'd prefer if it was in a gallery but it it is a weird one selling paintings for you know the last year when i was doing paintings they were going for more and more and the the last three or four that i was uh, events that i did the paintings went for like thirty thousand pounds for a painting that I'd just done. Yeah. Um, uh, you don't know, I mean, you know the charities, but uh, it is a very confusing way of the money getting thrown around the room. It is mm. really amazing. It's funny how quickly you get used to it because I've wrote, raised like 400 grand for charity and it's like, uh, you get used to paintings going for yeah. certain yeah, amount. And when they don't go for that much, you start to get a bit, be quite hard on yourself. But um <clears throat> I still remember the first few times I was doing it where the paintings were going for like 50 quid for, a, you know, a really local charity. And they were just as important and if not more exciting in some ways, just yeah. because it, it was so sort of personal. It was like people that were bidding for the paintings you knew and it was it was very simple. Um, yeah. But I get it's, it's, it's tricky. Like, it's quite hard to... Is that the people who are who are buying the paintings uh, are presumably they want the painting, or do they or are they just like looking to give some money to charity? I mean, they must actually yeah. be into the, the art. I mean, <laughs> it's all... a tough one. I think uh, I'd say the majority do want it. I'd, a lot of the time, it's a couple, and I reckon you know they're getting influenced, but from their other half, because I meet mm-hmm. a lot of them afterwards. You buy them, and a lot of the time, it's like the wife. Um. Yeah, the, 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 a lot of the time I think they they do want the paintings. Sometimes, um, yeah, you think they just bought them, especially if the paintings weren't weren't that good. Uh, which you know is it happens plenty, yeah, well, and yeah. uh, you just think <clears throat> that still went. Like yeah. when I was in Portugal, I was you know when I painted at the Stephen in front of <clears throat> Stephen Gerrard. And uh, everything went wrong on stage, and, and there was about five hundred people. And I, it was the only time where I actually apologised to the audience afterwards. <laughs> and it's, it still went for like six grand, and it was, it was so off. You know, everything went wrong on stage. I couldn't see what I was doing, and all this. And it was a bad painting to the point where I pop- apologised afterwards. So I was so embarrassed that someone had paid all this money. What yeah. was weird is that everyone at the party, when I spoke to him afterwards, none of them thought that. <laughs> no, well, that's it, isn't it, man? It's, it's yeah, like... self criticism, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, it was. Um, it was a funny. It was a funny one. Like I still don't know what I took from that. As far as should have I actually brought it up? Because I could hear halfway through the second performance because both paintings, because of my setup, I just mm. didn't couldn't paint properly. And um, the fact that Steven Gerrard was literally about a metre away from me and I was this sort of surprise guest. And I just watched a three-hour documentary about him on Amazon. So it was all a bit intense. 
and he's got one of these quite sort of generically good looking faces where there's not much to go on. So if you start wrong, it's like, oh. and yeah, um, yeah. anyway, by the second painting, I, I could hear in my head people in the audience going, "That is that should that is, that is incredibly <laughs> bad." You know, I'll give him three grand it. for that one. Yeah, and any anyone who was even slightly laughing or in, and I just built up this thought in my head, and by the second painting, didn't even bow at the end, kind of like walked off, and obviously you do it, off. you try it, it's bloody hard. <laughs> It was so surreal because Stephen Gerrard was the first one that came around the back of my the, the drape that I put up. And he was like, come here, mate. Don't worry about it. And it's like, thanks, Stephen Gerrard. Yeah. Appreciate, yeah. appreciate it. It's, it's a um, nice picture of Peter Crouch had done there, lad. Do you know what? I really hate that joke, right? The, the, the Some auctioneers who make that joke at the end... I do a painting, put loads of time into it, take a bow, and they come on stage and they're trying to sell the painting. And yeah. they'll go, that's a great paint painting of, and they'll say someone, you know, it's always someone like, um, you know, <laughs> Jim will fix it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. great one, Jim will fix it. And you're like, what are you doing? We're trying to sell this. <laughs> yeah. And it's not a bad painting either. Like, I get it when it's quite bad, but when it's like, you know, I'm proud of it. And they say this lame joke and you're like, yeah, nice one. That's. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, suppose my point. It it's um, as far as how I um, <clears throat> see the relationship with my paintings, and a lot of the time, the the one that gets me is when they suggest paintings. And I used to, when I was starting out, I would if they said we want you to do this painting live, I'd kind of just say yeah, just because I was getting work. Mm. And a lot of the time, the relationship between that's the wrong word they 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 don't know you know as much as i do about what works well as a yeah. live painting so if you're doing you know you got the music on and you're performing but you're doing a painting you know of a rugby presenter or something it's like why did i agree to this <laughs> um <laughs> it is so <clears throat> i guess what my point is that um like a lot of famous paintings famous people sometimes it's about the context like I, at certain events where it's it is a lot of football fans i could just do a painting of a man united logo and it would yeah, probably yeah. sell for loads of money and i i feel yeah. a bit funny about stuff like that and i try and i try and avoid it as much as i can because i i don't like that kind of side of art where it's like that yeah, yeah. They, they, it's about the fact that i'm doing a painting of of something man united related yeah struggle with a lot um i just i don't know i find it tough sometimes and i always trying to fight just doing something that's not that uh do you think yeah like, it's a funny relationship but you obviously you still obviously make the, the commission stuff like uh you know via your instagram or whatever obviously yeah. people are saying what they giving you a brief but um that's a bit more of a traditional kind of artist client relationship i guess it's still sometimes they just won't budge and sometimes they send you f pictures where they 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 just want that particular picture and you mm. kind of like sometimes you know that you when to say i think can we try some other paintings but then Sometimes they just want something specific and uh, a lot of the time you can... I'm starting to realize as well that it does affect the paintings. Uh, you know, my friend Tom was uh, quite, you know, we were quite drunk a few months ago and he sort of said, yes. And he sort of addressed a few paintings that I'd done where clearly I'd, like, I wasn't, quite engaged with what I was doing and he was like yeah they just I, they went up to scratch them and it's quite funny when someone you know says something that honest because yeah I just I always agree like I, I I'm never like whoa don't be saying that I'm like yeah you're right <laughs> a bit painting by numbers sort of thing well it's like you can just tell there's I was thinking about this the other day to do with this because I was thinking, God, you know, there's so many paintings where the passion's not as high as others, and I was feeling a bit bad, and I was thinking, well, if I asked you two this question, you know, you would, the amount of work that you've had to done 
to do in the past where the passion is not quite there. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, is you know, it just feels with painting that it's a bit sacrilege. Like you can't feel like that almost because p- mm. painting's got this sort of, you know, it's on this sort of pedestal of like, you, if you're going to do a painting, it has to mm. be beautiful. And it's a tough one, really, because yeah, I think want I think it to be beautiful. What you yeah. kind of like basically touched on there is that painting uh, uh, is still kind of. <laughs> Consu- like music uh, is consumed in a completely different way to paintings. Like paintings, still like not elitist, uh, but like the 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 target audience is still seems yeah. a bit different. Like music, it's like so like readily consumed by people, uh, and it gets churned over, and like there's new stuff coming out all the time. But what would you have in your studio if, if, if you had a painting? What would you want in there? Like in here? around you? Yeah, if that's where you spend most of the time. That's a good question. Um, probably something more that's more like um, graphic designer. Abstract. Yeah, okay. abstract. Yeah, like design sort of geometrical kind of style stuff. Yeah. It's a bit of a tricky... Um, it's quite a tricky comparison that though, isn't it? Because like... I feel like we're moving into a very like motion world. So everything is, you know, a video or it's moving a lot of the time, isn't it? Yeah. So music becomes a part of that. True. And it becomes a bit more throwaway. So it's a bit difficult to, because, you know, there are musical artists who would spend as long on a piece of work as a, a painter would. Yeah. And in the same sort of arena and headspace and field, but, because there's so much stuff out there that's being consumed otherwise it's like a bigger base that is out there so you kind of Mm. identify that there's more quick turnover although there is still those people who are doing the big sort of important work at the top if you know what i mean yeah 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 like we're just in that sort of era at the moment where everything has a video so it needs music so someone designs a generic thing to go on that video yeah and yeah Does that I, suppose it, I suppose it yeah yeah <clears throat> i suppose it yeah it did get me thinking about whether there's you know in 30 40 years what sort of artists are going to be like mm. seen as like legends from this you know because it's all <clears throat> especially in music all the people who are like the big legendary acts you know from band wise like the chili peppers or like or yeah. it's all going further back it's you know there's loads loads of <clears throat> legends but i can't imagine many people yeah i don't I, world these days so is that our age is that it's our age though because we can't isn't it? Yeah. i can't identify anyone who has who's been in the charts for the last 15 years doesn't the chart yeah. the chart sounds like such a <laughs> dated word doesn't it it does right? uh in the charts I, I think of um what was it you know the big the big big mouth or something it was you know it was like uh, yeah, I think I know. Charts, ba- yeah. like one of the charts breakdown, and it had big mouth, like cartoon cars or something. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. Yeah. The the throw. I was. I can't remember. What I was listening to recently. We were just talking about how throwaway and like songs are made now, and um, I suppose yeah, a lot of a lot of art is. <laughs> well, yeah. I'd like. I think I'd be. I think. I mean, it doesn't <clears throat> bother me. I'm. But I've got a business making music and people, you know, I make money from it. So, you know, that's the that's the bottom line, really. Yeah. Uh, I think I, <clears throat> it would be nice. Uh, I think I'd feel better if my music was being bought by mm. fans. You know, they'd heard your song somewhere, they'd look you up, bought your album or, or whatever. Um, but it's just not a practical business model for think... music at the moment. <laughs> It comes back to this um, idea of like how much we consume stuff again, though, doesn't it? It's like when we were kids, you'd have a film that mm. was like a big hitter. You'd buy it on DVD, on video and you'd watch that film over and over again and it'd be your favourite film. But like now everything is so readily available and there is just so much of it that mm. there, there doesn't seem to be that space for anything to become that special, even when it is really, you know, special work. It kind of you you're already moving on to the next thing before you've even finished it so it's well, like, I was yeah. like i was yeah when i was performing 
yeah, I've been getting into roller skating, another topic, yeah. but <clears throat> I like, you know, it's the dance style of it. I went, I was thinking, do you know what? I've been listening to loads of classical jazz recently and I thought, do you know what? I'll add to this because I sort of dance in an area in my studio. I'll get a record player, you know, and I'll, I'll just get old records, just have a few, and I sort of dance to the same ones. And like in, in the same sort of, you know, thought process in my head, I'm like, all right, I'll just use Spotify, you know. And that was the throwaway. I couldn't even finish it in my head before I just went, no, do you know what, I'll just use. But I was going to say something there, Andy, like, because I use Epidemic Sound, yeah. you know, which has got loads of mm. artists on there. But, you you know, you're saying that you'd quite like to have people who are like, I like li you listen to your music. Yeah. There's some people on there. There's a guy called Matt Large. He makes sort of like hip hop instrumentals. And um, I use loads of his music. And mm. I I suppose if uh, when am I going to meet Matt Large? But <laughs> <clears throat> those are even with you know, music that you're using from a site. Yeah. If your name's on there. Um, there is potentially a way of getting some sort of kudos that way. Like yeah. That. Yeah, but, I guess yeah. it's... Just, yeah. Because that the stuff that I do, whilst I don't make that many albums that I, that I are going to bore me when I'm making it, I have made a few, that, like just, just generic daytime TV music because it's you knock them out quickly and they make you decent money and it's quite a good mm -hmm. like business decision um so yeah i don't know i don't know what, where i'm going with that really i do I, I kind of think that like <clears throat> it's i think it's the same as it's always been like cream rises to the top always mm. doesn't Ooh, it? get the but metaphors I, out yeah 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 but i think that like you know, like you say, there's there's a lot of money to be made in the in all the rest of it, and there's a lot of opportunity, mm. and there's a, quite a big lack of curation. There's like not the gatekeepers that there was before. Like it's a lot more. You can put you can upload your stuff. <clears throat> People yeah. like it, they'll download it. There's no one there to say, yeah, that's all right or that's not all right. A lot of the time, so it's like it's just a different playing field that we're on, and I think a lot of that stuff will get forgotten. But I just I still think there's room for. The really good stuff to like you know to make it self-known or make it yeah know. yeah there's i've i've you know not that i uh i don't comment on any forums really but it always pretty handy to find it out tidbits t-shirt right and stuff, there aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> i got i got a few comments that <clears throat> you know is they were saying uh when people andy. try and yes andy. where have you got andy that's right, coming back. Classic. Yeah, when um <laughs> when people oh hello. When people leave comments underneath underneath some of my posts and they're trying to ask about work, uh they I, it's quite common that they'll ask for the same kind of people like a Joker painting, which I find this hilarious because I love painting the Joker and I I honestly think I, I could <laughs> I could build a strong career just doing paintings of the Joker. Yeah, yeah. You know, just that as my thing. And I think I would sell plenty. Um, it's, I don't know what I think about that. It's, mm. it's almost, again, it's down to a lot of the time. It's down to the, um, the context of it as opposed to the, the quality of the art. Sometimes it's like, as long as it looks like, the Joker, yeah, yeah, you can, like you know, the classic is if someone did pop art, um, just with two layers, but if they did it with the right people, they would sell just as much, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> My sister was like, Oh, you should do loads of pr you should do prints, which loads of people tell me I should do pr prints, but uh, I just I always find that they don't, they're not really that beneficial. In terms uh, of what too too much work and not enough like return. It's like when you by the time you decide what work you want to do as prints, and then you set up and you take a photo of it, and then you sort of you know you edit the photo. This doesn't actually sound that bad when I'm talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> take the photo, you you know you send it to the. But I don't I know. Was, I was speaking to um, 
I was speaking to a friend of mine in, who, <clears throat> who works in the framing business and he was saying to me, if you ever do print runs, limit them to less than 25 because anything over that, people feel like they're not getting anything over special. Yeah. Whereas mm. under 25, you can actually charge like a good premium and you, you know, you're, it's a bespoke bit of work then, isn't it? So you're not, kind of not just churning it out on an endless, yeah. Do you think you'll do any of your future photos, Rob? Because, you know, like the hair one that you posted the other day. Yeah. Um, even if you just print out one for yourself, just to... Yeah, I print them out. I do print them out. You. I do print them out at home. Um, I've got a good photo printer here, so I, I tend to do that. But I think I will do. I think on my... Um, like even on like YouTube videos and that, I'd like to give them give one away to like I don't know in what sort of way yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, but just yeah, to yeah. like drive a bit of engagement it's with people. It's a good way and, to do it. Yeah, yeah. Just have it's a, bit a good of... way to do it if it's uh, it's if it's on your side. It's you've got like a little efficient process from yeah, yeah. putting it in an envelope and sending it. If that's <clears> smooth. And give away as many as you can, but I've done it all in the. Oh wrong no, I'd only do. I'd only do uh, one. I think. <laughs> like, I'm not going to give away. You used to give. You used to give away paintings, didn't you, on the Instagram? Page? I used to give away the five by four foot paintings, and then I, mm. you know, I I I couldn't send them stretch because it would cost a fortune. So I bought yeah. these con- concrete pipes. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. I, I bought these cardboard. Cost me a pubes. cost me a fortune in postage, man. It's so <laughs> heavy. <laughs> Sending concrete in the post, <clears throat> um, and yeah, the the tubes arrived and they were about that thick, about that you know the diameter was mm. like that. And like I ordered twenty of them and they arrived like on, on a big crate. Uh, you know, this was to, all to give away free paintings. Um, yeah. yeah. And they all arrived and like they had to keep them outside from my studio. And, <clears throat> you know, I was giving these paintings away because we're on Instagram when you're doing it for that moment where someone wins it, it's great. Mm. But then taking it off the canvas, rolling it up, sending it and paying, you know, putting, I must have spent hundreds, but getting the ones that I did manage to get out. There's still a few. Though. And, um, you know, most people when they received them were like, really big this <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i had one that i that i took ages to send and that happened like i finally Bless i woke it. up one morning with this like moral decision i just thought i've got to send that i'm sure it's deep down it i'm still feeling bad that i didn't send it i sent it to them and it arrived and after like all that time and they just went ah oh, thanks it's arrived it's really big it's like <laughs> god this yeah um <laughs> as i say it has to be like really really simple and then you can enjoy giving things away for free and, yeah yeah the giveaway um, thing i'm is, not gonna i'm not gonna print them out at 20 foot mate. <laughs> <laughs> it should be quite an easy because yeah. it's not you know the, the cost to you as as doing that as a giveaway to drive some engagement on your channel it's pretty fine, minimal man. yeah you know what i mean it's quite it's very oh, you would you would you would put that up somewhere as well, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Well, I think you do it on a on a prerequisite that like if you win, you have to like put a post up on your Facebook and your Instagram or whatever. Yeah. In the idea, hope, yeah. yeah, that you'd get a couple more yeah. a bit more engagement from it. You know, it's win oh, win win then really. Send Which one do you reckon you would uh, give away at this point? Well me. The hair. The hair. Uh, yeah, well, the idea, I think the idea looking is... looking at you. <laughs> I can't see where you're looking, man. <laughs> uh, the idea is that I do it at the end of each video. I do a bit where it's like, mm. I don't know, whoever leaves the funniest comment or whatever yeah. is going to get a print of this five by seven. <clears throat> so it's quite small. And so that it's not, you don't want, you know, without sounding horrible to you, Dave, it's a bit egotistical to send a massive print of your work. <laughs> I think that's going to go in my fucking front room. <laughs> Woof. That shit but, freaks me out as it is, yeah. <laughs> My joke so probably, for that is, well, you can put it on your ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like... So i probably do a little one. But it kind of like, it, it, I think it serves as a bit of a way to get people like interested, like, oh, you know, there's a printer that going. I wonder how much they are. Have a check on your website and you can yeah, do, yeah. you know, I don't know. It's just a, it's another You probably need thing, to it? have a little, like, have a little bit at the top of the uh, thing, wouldn't you? So that people knew to wait to the end to find out yeah 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 win it yeah it's good do you think do you think uh rob you would 
do any sort of tutorials? Do you think? Um, I'm toying with the idea. I think I've got. A, <clears throat> uh, there's so many out there, <clears throat> but I know like when I've been selling prints before in the past, like I used to have a uh, market stall a couple of times. So I'd sell prints on, and like I'd always get people saying, "Oh, mate, like do you, you know, do you do one-on-one tuition? Like I'd love to come out with you with my camera and like whatever." Mm. And it, like, or have you got a YouTube channel where you teach you how to do stuff? And it's like, I kind of don't. There's so much out there, but I think it's like it, there's so much out there because so many people watch it as well. Mm. So it's a bit yeah. of a dilemma. Yeah, there's, and I think there's always if I do, room, do it, there? I have to do it. I don't want to be like an expert. I'd rather be. This is how I do it. This yeah. is what I'm doing, and this is why I'm doing it. And being like, what you need for this is, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. I find that to be a bit of a, a breakthrough. I was what that um, Matt Devellier or whatever he's called. Um, mm. I had a bit of a breakthrough the other week when I, I read, you know, this is how I do so yeah. and so, and I sort of put loads of reminders on to remind me to that should be my approach because, as you say, yeah. There's so many people who do it that that can just just slow you down so much. But when when you sort of start by approach approaching it like this is how I do it, it yeah. does chill things out. And like you know, you, there's so much. There is a lot in there when you when you get find the right route of trying to teach. As hard as it is, like we we'll, we're all capable of it more than yeah yeah. Um, you know, uh, since I've been doing the ones that are still feel really uncomfortable, people get in touch with that specific thing of like, I love seeing behind the scenes, and it's the same with all of us that mm. like we've got us. I think it's really important to try and give away more and more because <clears> yes, yeah. um, I've I've, I've toyed yeah. with the idea of doing it quite a, quite a lot. I, I like what Disclosure do; they do uh, love li- live on videos, Twitch. Yeah. <clears throat> the only problem I have is I can't, because like they they seem to have. I think he's got like some sort of foot switch, so he can like switch off his monitors or switch his mic off when his speakers are playing. Because uh, <clears throat> otherwise, you get like you know, if yeah, I'm going to teach, if I'm trying to teach people techniques, uh, I don't want to be doing it on headphones really, because it's not a, a very well. You just can't mix stuff down properly on headphones compared to s- proper speakers. Have you seen? I mean, we still struggle with that at my work. Like, yeah. it's a, it's such a hard thing to get around, and like that's what we do. You know, it's like we if we can, we'll take a direct out every time, yeah, and have them with in ears because it's just easier. And the only other way is just have really low volume. It's so hard a workaround to not get that bleed on the mic. So that every yeah, time yeah. you're speaking, it's like <clears throat> it's a nightmare, lad. Uh, yeah. So you're thinking of doing the like, yeah, the live ones. Well, it's the live but... stuff. It just cause, just because there's no editing. I mean, and people, are, if you like, fuddle about a bit and go go down like the wrong track and have to backtrack and stuff, people kind of like a bit forgiving because <clears throat> it's live. You know, like Mark Ribier, like it takes <clears throat> ages to build some of his songs, and he's like, "Ah, shit, this I'm gonna start again." Have just you seen his? video of him breaking down his equipment because he does talk a little bit about the stuff that he uses to do his live shows um possibly i haven't watched any of his stuff for a while actually i was watching uh, without digressing too much i was watching reggie watts like one of his famous yeah. stand-ups it's uh you know he's he's at go tech i think the event's called you know when he starts with a british accent yeah oh god it's, 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 i kept it's... wanting to like I kept wanting to go out of it because it's like 35 minutes long and it was quite late at night and I kept going to to go off the video because yeah. like yeah I, I remember it and it just kept keeping me in it yeah. like what he was doing it was just he starts talking in loads of just dis- different languages but it's like utter it's like nonsense mixed with yeah. oh could this actually be Chinese and then ja- it's, it's <laughs> he's really on there. Good. It's, it's on so good. He's got on one of Steve-O's podcasts. It's really worth watching. He's the man. He's a, he's on a he was on another one as well. And he's had uh, what was he on? Joe Rogan, I think he was on. Oh yeah, I've not yeah. seen that one. Yeah, 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 he's, uh, yeah. Um, I feel like we're getting to the end of the original question. Yeah, because <laughs> we're wondering. I had one more point I'd written down actually. Is yeah. that 
I think like the trouble is as well nowadays is there's a lot of replication. So people were like, mm. we need this sort of sound for this video or, you know, this one works well. Like, you know, a lot of YouTube videos have got very similar soundtracks on them, haven't they? Dr drone music. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Lo-fi hip hop's pretty popular <laughs> yeah, these days. Yeah. yeah. So it's all like, yeah, it's the, the replication, which isn't necessarily an artistic endeavor, is it? It's a, <clears throat> well, before that mm. style, it was the acoustic guitar style. And before that, I think it's always going to be like that. Can you imagine when it was like in the 80s? Yeah. <laughs> it's like everything was a really enormous snare sound and 100% yeah. reverb on everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those were like, the days, es right? Yeah. Especially for like the videos that you would have been doing, Andy, in the, well, both in the, in the 80s, if we were around then. You, making the music for a video in the 80s like mm. for, you know like uh just to be clear you were around then, support but you were very young <laughs> <clears throat> yeah is it yeah i mean well, funny funny making... there's, there's still a certain uh range of person what client i don't know i suppose they're a client who uh still want the really horrible you know acoustic guitar and some hand clapping <clears throat> and uh, can yeah. you put the mouth organ on that yeah. Uh, more Have you got a, a finger base, please? A clean finger base. <laughs> finger base. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's always the first setting when you're on uh, Cubase. Oh, don't know what I'm talking. About. <laughs> right, I'm going to um, quick emergency question. I'm going to uh, share my screen for this um, self-portrait that we were doing. All okay. Right. But I have got a question. One thing I wanted to cover first, Dave, was so I've decided Shoot. I've decided to do mine uh, digitally, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and my reason is this: <clears throat> this is just purely down to lack of skill. But basically, <laughs> my problem with when I do trying to do a, a, a paint or drawing or a painting is like I spend ages like just trying to get the form of it right. Do you know what, by just yeah. lightly going on the page or, or canvas or whatever. <clears throat> by the time I've got something that I like, you know, and then I fill it out and stuff, there's so much shit on the canvas, on, on whatever canvas you're using, that, that kind of like spoils the, you know, can never sort of get rid of that. When you say shit, what do you mean? Do you mean just like marks, extraneous marks. marks? Yeah. It's Are like they... when you start shading an eye and you're like, this is going to be perfect. You're like, oh, no, it's slightly wrong shape. And you've just got a dark eye there that isn't yours. Yeah. yeah. Are they Are they? <clears throat> are they so, woolly lines? Is yeah. My, uh, yeah. So that's... so doing it digitally, you can know, you can do all that on one layer. And then, yeah. you know, and then you just go, that's good. And then, you, and then you fucking... I think I'm starting to picture what this might look like then. It's going to be like... I th I'm imagining Metal Gear Solid, mate. Drawing. It's not actually... Look, so... um. I'll, uh, I need to just uh, talk amongst yourselves. Metal Gear Solid, mate. Metal Gear Solid. I need to he was a, he was a fantastic. <clears throat> yeah, I think that they are they're bringing a film out of it, and um, saw recently who's going to be playing. Do you it. want to see the picture that I'm doing it from first, or the actual thing? Uh, the picture. All right, let me share this. That screen. you're doing it from. Desktop share. It's going to be a photo of you, Andy. Is it? Uh, yeah, can you see my screen there? Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Okay, this, is, this is the photo. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, so basically, it's not finished. Like I'm going to continue working on it, but it's. Uh, de uh, you yeah. look like you're in. The, you do look like you're in the middle of a. Hmm. And the left eye is definitely not. Uh, how can I zoom? Okay, in? this is interesting. I like this. This is uh, something visually that we can go through. So I was, yeah, so my goal was just like to, you know, get the shading, get the actual form right. Because I, I think what I actually like when doing when doing stuff like this is actually stuff which is pretty minimal, but it just actually captures the mm. the tone, like the, yeah. the, the emotion rather than actually, you know, yeah. realism. But I couldn't Rob, get, do you want to go first? I couldn't get that left eye, like it just looks a bit special. I yeah, the I, eyes I mean, like, I, I, I mean, quite yeah. like it. Yeah, the only bit that's off for me, I mean, and and I don't know if we're really looking for bits that are off because, like, no. I don't know what the point of it is, but your chin's just a bit, you know, you've got quite an angular chin, and that bit on the left mm. sticks out more than yours. You're, you're not, 
You're looking a bit Jimmy Hill there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. You have got a decent chin under there. Yes, but, but yeah, look at I the suppose... sharp line. Look at the sharp line that he's comes down the, uh, on his chin. Yeah, he's, he's got, he got a bit got, of a. You've got the podcast. Um... Wait, just on that side. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, and then it's just yeah, <laughs> it's that, and then the detail, like obviously a little bit of beard detail, would probably help with that anyway. Yeah, and then the direction of your hair as well, because at the moment it looks like you got a comb over. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I <laughs> oh, do you know what? I thought you had a flat cap on on it, and I was just assuming you. I can see the photo. You don't have it. <laughs> yeah, I never. I didn't get around to. I don't know what I was doing with the hair. I'm just, I'm just yeah, doing. pretty good day, man. I, I like it. It's good. Now. I'm going to continue working on it because it is uh, enjoyable. I went to zoom in on it. Then it's not my screen. Um, yeah, yeah I think the 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 nose, uh, the your left nostril. Oh, uh, yeah, no, that, you, yeah, there. that one. Yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think that needs to be. Sh- uh, to have shadow for it because at the moment it looks like you've got a really wide mm. nose. Yeah. Um, because uh, it's kind of playing tricks on you because there's no shadow and it, yeah. I think it can't. You just it just looks like you've got a wide nose. It and does. I it? think yeah. all you need to do is where you can sort of see the faint line. Yeah. Angular at the tip of the nose just yeah. to sort of. I, I really like doing that part of the nostril where it catches the light again around the bottom part. Yeah, um, right, it's, bit, yeah. <clears throat> it's interesting though because you've chosen like that that photograph that you've done mm. is obviously on a really wide angle lens, so it's, there's always going to be a little bit of like distortion there, mm. if you know what I mean. So it's like, I think uh, so. yeah, I just did it yeah. on the phone, but yeah, I think Andy really wanted to do his puffer jacket in the background as well. <laughs> You're looking forward to doing that bit. I it was for um, ages. It was for ages. I just did the head and didn't have like headphones or shoulders and everything. It was, it was just like it doesn't really have the sort of feeling that I'm going for. Just the head on like, <laughs> you know, in the middle of the canvas, not head. Sh- shoulders or anything. Yeah, yeah let me. Um, I th- yeah, I think um, also you know you've got decent facial hair especially on the chin mm. which would be pretty easy for you to to add in i mean let me think uh i think it's the because a lot of the time when i'm looking at my own stuff like this i'll like cover up parts of the face especially like i'll cover up the bottom two halves to see if how the eyes look yeah and then i'll cover up the eyes and see how the bottom two parts look and keep playing around and then i'll do it horizontally as well because sometimes half of the face can look like them on like equally down the middle and the other half in doing that as well we're just covering up different parts often yeah Um, i think i found a lot of the time it's not where you think um it's going wrong you like convinced that it's a certain part and then it's only when you cover it up you're like oh no it's not that you're um i don't think your mouth's wide enough as well if you look where it is in relation to your nose or your yeah, nose is too point. wide, actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, the outside of the mouth, Andy, generally, especially with the pose you're doing, yeah, that sort of lines up with the um, like the sort of middle of your eyes. Uh, oh yeah, I can see so that actually on here. Like, <clears throat> so yeah, Rob's right there for sure. You just bring it. <clears throat> Not much more lip, maybe the bottom lip, but just wider the actual line. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, Chelsea, games. I think. Yeah, I think your your hair would probably make it look a lot like <laughs> your, yeah, your facial yeah. hair. And your, I cannot see anything that isn't a flat cap. I think it's because I've been wearing one so much. <laughs> so it's, it's yeah, like it's got the tip and everything. Like, Have I got a flat <clears> cap? <throat> mm-hmm. It sends it like it's it's like a pose that I can imagine, you know, like a postman doing. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, right, let me get out. I don't see here. them as headphones either. I see them as like uh, a scarf. I like that. I think I, I I think I'll try and bring something to the table next week because um I'm gonna I'm gonna carry on the uh, stuff like that. Let me get this How back. did you find it then? Like what was that your first go or <clears throat> what made you do no, it dig- I, digitally? Because I, I I sort of started messing around doing it uh, just with you know just pencil on paper. I was like I, I know this is gonna lead to me being frustrated by. <laughs> loads of yeah. nonsense so i thought about doing it with charcoal because i like char oh, what i like great, about yeah. charcoal stuff is that you can get if you get it right 
you can get do do quite a lot without actually much having to make many moves if you know what i mean yeah i mean so, like quite often there's complete rubbish when i do it but <laughs> charcoal is uh i think <laughs> yeah i think you can get away with whatever like if it goes wrong it's just a charcoal sketch, you know. So, yeah. You know, it's like, it's kind of like, it is a bit abstract charcoal a lot of the time. Uh, it's very easy to get wrong, but it kind of looks like it I mean, do you, looks right. Do you use it much? I mean, I guess. I've the, hardly ever used it. The I problem, always associate, yeah. I guess, with it is that it's always like, when you finish your painting, your painting is always going to be quite perishable because it's it never sets. It's not like paint or anything. No, you have to you I get like special it glue stuff that you spray on it, don't you? I do. Yeah, if I, like I remember it. back in yeah, I back like in, the back in te uh, college. Technical uh, the technical pencils I've been using loads. You know the uh, mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Uh, <laughs> you don't really get woolly lines with them. You mm. get your little rubber on the end, you know, which helps yeah. quite a bit. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I've been. I don't know. It's fun. It's funny with art because, like, I was going through a sketchbook phase recently, and I was doing it loads. Um, but then I just got into something else, and the only thing that really stays constant with me is doing paintings, mm -hmm. and and like so many other little bits of painting, which makes some artists, especially online so good is that they're always doing sketchbooks as well and they're always doing all the fundamentals of art um which makes for very good channels to watch and very good yeah. content yeah um and I, I i i don't know maybe i'm a phase guy and that's just that with the, <laughs> yeah you know, but some right, things man, stick like... and they stick for good yeah in it and but the amount of things that become a phase and it, it makes I don't there's anything wrong with that though because it keeps it fresh doesn't it like and you've got to find it interesting yourself so <laughs> yeah if you're just doing stuff just because you feel like you should mm. as opposed to because you want to then mm. that's not going to get you anywhere is it if you guys had any phases with what you're like roughly you know in your line of work or your like, style where I, 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 for me it's just mm. creativity in general like yeah I, i'll have i've got my core things that i do which is video and photography really and I dabble with music more than I do most other stuff. But I'll go through phases where I draw, where I'm, you know, spoon carving or whatever, like woodwork, and just like random stuff that I'll just pick up and just have a go with. And just like, for me, that stuff's never going to make me any money, but it's really important because like, it's still creativity, just because it's not qualified by me earning a wage from it. It yeah. doesn't really matter. It's just a process and like, you're just learning it how you learn anything and i yeah. think it's really important to have them things that are not like that are subsidiary just like a bit like i'm going to do that just because i want to do it and learn okay something. so with that in mind because i did this today do you do you uh <clears throat> appreciate like going on instinct sometimes where you think of something that you want to try or do and you why it's like right in your head do you just sometimes think i need to do this now or I yeah. do it. So anything I want to do, I will just like, I'll, I know this sounds a bit funny, but I will spend quite a bit of money on mm. to try it because I feel like you have to, if you're like, I, I want, I want to give that a proper go because I know I'm not like a, I'm not someone who's a bit of a flitter. I find stuff and I like it and I do it yeah. and I'm quite consistent. So I, if I start getting into something, I'll just be like, yeah, I'm going to put chuck loads of money at this and buy the, all the kit I need and give it a good go. Yeah. If I don't like it, I'll sell it all. And, you know, I'll know that I don't like it. Or it'll be a hobby that I pick up maybe like once every year or so and I'll just do something with it. And, yeah, I, I just think you've got to. If you if you like, I'm going to do something, just throw yourself into it and do it. Like, yeah. don't... Well, this morning, like, I planned to finish a load of oil paintings today with my Sunday and I was just set on it and then it's because I'd just done a tiger painting. I was like, uh, I thought of this, I thought of doing another Tiger King, you know, mm. parody um, where Carrot Basket tries to steal the painting from my studio. And then Davy Exotic comes in and stops her and was like, you know, I caught you in the act. And, <laughs> and I, you know, he's, I, I just, before I thought about it too much, 
Like I just said, right, no, do you know what? I'm going to do that today. And because I had done it before in the past, like I sort of, you know, went under my sink, grabbed the two wigs, <laughs> put them in a bag, and then sort of went around my house and like found the pair of shorts that I used once for Carrot Basket and got got a cushion that I used for like her up and like went around the house and put all these things in a bag and sort of was like quite serious walking into the studio <laughs> with this bag of props like I am I am I've I'm decided I'm gonna do yeah, yeah. and I set, <laughs> set up all the lighting you know and I was I was quite serious for the, <laughs> the whole thing and then my mate who like rents the back of the studio just walked in and I was like in a wig with lipstick <laughs> all over my face you know with like it was we laughed for ages but yeah but it was <clears throat> as far as going on sort of an instinct of like do you know what i'm gonna do this now or i'll just i won't do yeah, it yeah yeah um and it's the same with equipment isn't it and things that you buy where you like you just know that it's like uh oh, well if i've got it in the basket on the site mm. you know i'll just leave it in there for a bit <laughs> Yeah. Might get a voucher. They might send me a voucher. <laughs> I'll accidentally purchase it because it was in the batch basket when I was buying something really small. Whoops. Right. So I'm going to move us on. I am yeah. pen pencil sketch mm -hmm. from Observation. The mm. photographs used. Um, I did four in total. Oh, yeah. And Jane laughed at all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really believe good. you showed her. <laughs> But I feel like this is probably my best one. I reckon this is probably the best there. Yeah, is it going to zoom on. in on it? Yeah, well. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? That really looks like you. It kind of does. The features are too small on my face. Like, like you know, I've been quite, I think stuff. I've been quite kind to myself. So, Rob, if you do it if you do it with that, if you cover the eyes yeah. on your... Try it. Just, co just put your hand over the eyes. Is that... <laughs> think there's <laughs> so much life in them maybe use like your index finger and put the rest behind the pad yeah there we go i've got a long enough index finger like, you see like that like i think that it's i think the eyes are the, the only thing that might need it because the yeah, mouth yeah. and the nose and all the features and the beard i think are yeah that's all right and it's, and the eyes are actually they're all right in terms mm. of shape because i worked quite hard on the shape mm. But it's the spacing. Like, I think they're a yeah, far I think they're brow. A bit too close. No, I just you think know. they're a tiny bit too close together. Yeah, a little bit busted. You know the isn't it? you know the classic <laughs> rule, Rob, that your eyes are an eye apart. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I see. But it's, yeah, I think maybe the your left eye in it is needs to be taken needs to go that way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny though when you're drawing from observation because you obviously like realize but you're probably moving a little bit as well so it does like see like, Andy, do... if you cover one of the eyes yeah 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 you mm -hmm. see that if you shut your eye if you I cover my, his my his left eye his, uh, miles away from <laughs> well, it's not gonna left well no you I'm just uh, you don't have to put you don't have to cover the camera if you just like use no no them. My, my, the, that doesn't matter it's too complicated but, it's yeah i mean you know it's the first time i've picked up a pencil for 10 years, probably. So I was pretty happy Have you with got it. the other ones, Rob, as well? Oh, mate, you don't want to see the other ones. I Honestly, really I'll, be, I'll be embarrassed to show you the other ones. They're like, started off, fuck it. Oh, no. I'll leave it at that one. Thank you. <laughs> Andy, I, um, you're frozen on my screen. Yeah, frozen. It's a well. great... That was a great one to freeze on, though. <laughs> yeah. So it's all right. I was quite happy. I think I might yeah. just try and do a few portraits from time to time. Yeah. <clears> so did you do it in a mirror? Yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's great in the mirror, isn't it? Yeah, I've, al I've always. I, I don't think I've, I've really done any from photographs. I like oh, the. Um, hell, I've got mine. I've got one of mine. Sorry. I like the like staring yourself down a bit. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. you feel like you're really having a bit of a conversation with yourself. Yeah. I didn't think I had. I didn't think I had one here because I've been doing you, but I've got my old one. That's um. I don't know. It's it's such a. I don't know. Um... <laughs> I, 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 I think he. The color of the background. It was like, a, and I've shot like this hair there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Being brought in because I had it short and so, so it's like. 
I think you're giving yourself. I, I like it. I think you're giving you, you've done yourself a disjustice with. I think you're giving yourself a bit too much forehead. Yeah, it's not, it's not that you don't have that much forehead. I don't well, think. Yeah, um, <clears throat> that I think it's about three years old, maybe two. Years. Yeah, and I th- well, I think I was going to say you look a bit clean on it, if you know what I mean, like a bit youthful, whereas you're not yeah. that youthful, and you know, you, <laughs> you, I mean, you are, but like you're not, you're not that youthful. Rob, it's fine. I can. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting though. The first couple I tried, I was like, I tried a few different angles and stuff, and it's like foreshortening and all that sort of business is so difficult when you know you've got to be really good at drawing to get that point across that you're, you're yeah. doing it from a different angle. Otherwise, yeah, you just look like you've got a squished head. Yeah, it's difficult. Like, it got me thinking about. Um like you know the the masters of painting from the past yeah. and like these days people there's so many learning resources mm. you know available to you and like people who were really good from you know historically were they just really naturally gifted at proportional <clears throat> stuff or were they being taught by you know the masters did someone like did they apprentice Eyes. They, yeah, <laughs> the majority of them would have been apprentice, like, and then yeah. you know, I guess it's, it's so, the yeah. same. It's the same story, I think. Like you're building on past generations' knowledge and and moving up from there. Because I think, like, it? it was a you know, it was seen as a craft because there was no photography or anything, was there? So yeah, it's it's, like it's to be a painter was a bit of a job, really. You know, yeah. go and paint these famous people and what have you. Oh, it's like. I remember seeing a painting in Liverpool and it was, uh, it was, uh, you see, you see them, they're quite like kitsch is the word maybe. Yeah. They're, um, you know, paintings of fields with snow at sunset mm. with loads of sheep in the field and the farmer. Yeah. Uh, we had, we had one as a print that I grew up with, you know, it was really tacky when I think mm. about it, but we were in this, uh, art gallery and I saw the original by Joseph Farquharson and it was like, um, maybe 1800, late 1800s. And, you know, obviously he was, it was looking at, it was massive. And it was, you got that feeling of like a cold uh, evening. Well, I suppose it was in the winter. So it'd be, you know, like half three, quarter yeah. to four, you know, when you're getting that last bit of sun. And he must have been in a field over and over again when it was snowing. Yeah, yeah. And taking it all in, getting all the colours. And it was like, you could really, really feel the temperature that you'd created with the bit mm. of sun coming in. It blew my mind. Like, it, out of all the paintings that I love that are far from that, much more impressionistic, this was, I'd love that on my wall. It was well, that's it, isn't un- it? unreal, that, man. But at that like, point, that was, that, that was, it was quite important to get a good likeness almost. Do you know what I mean? Because there wasn't any other way of translating that information. It was like you paint it, you draw it. Yeah, well, that's why it. impression in start. Yeah, 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 that's it. Because like... I grew up in Constable Country, like mm. you know, a few hundred yards from John Constable's, so that's everywhere. And it's the same, you know, amazing landscape painter, quite boring by today's eyes, just because <clears> it looks quite real. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's I suppose like... that was that was the that was the goal, wasn't it? That's just yeah, like, yeah, be as realistic depiction as you can that was like seen as the pinnacle yeah he's, he he uh he still had a bit of a style to him um yeah watched watch yeah. breakdowns of his portraits we had some, but... we had some uh table mats with his prints on <laughs> yeah my mum and dad went to china and there was um in their hotel room it was like the hayway and they were like yeah we live like 100 meters away from that there's an artist um, from America who became one of the most, in his time, at like the like 1930s or something, he became one of the most, the richest artists because he would go around people's houses, uh, like doorstop, and he would ask them what they would ideally want in in a painting, like mm. the subject and the look. And he, he did it to the point where he pretty much got, you know, like an algorithm to work by. Yeah. and started doing all these paintings of like villages with snow mm. and you know like this fake glow to everything yeah um, yeah that you see on pretty much every christmas card and you know he he like created this this sort of painting that everyone would have on their wall yeah. but you know 
the guy who was talking about it said that he went into the gallery to see him and he was he was so conflicted because it was like they were amazing paintings but for like all the wrong reasons yeah, yeah well, that's it i always wow. have this uh. i have this theory that like if your creative work is too widely accepted then you it kind of doesn't mean much do you know what i mean because like if everyone likes it then it's not saying anything it was saying very little to a lot of people mm. whereas i'd rather have work that was perhaps speaking to a smaller portion of people who actually really saw what it was about if you know what i mean like mm. you know it's like pop music it appeals to lots of people because it's like a bit bland yeah rather generic and it just makes you feel happy <laughs> whereas something a bit more considered and you know, left field, it, it, fewer people like it, but they like it more intensely. Yeah. And would probably follow it a lot more and be willing to, you know, what pay more or whatever, if that's your own goal. Mm. And I think that's a real interesting distribution of like how you, how you place things and what they're worth. Like, you know, do you want yeah. less from I... each individual or more interaction from each individual with a narrower um, idea in mind? Yeah, I think it comes That's... back, comes like loops around to kind of what I was talking about at the start about having. I'm doing like this sort of slightly more generic stuff for for TV, <clears throat> or, you know, do you do what you want to do and try and pick up fans? Yeah, it's yeah, but it's, it's hard to, isn't it? it? Like and make money really until you're yeah. established. Like that is the, that's the boat you find yourself in. Really, the only person who's done it to great success and probably had both is mr scruff he's <laughs> like got mm. massive dedicated following but also supplies bargain hunt with all of their music as well <laughs> thinking about it andy that's uh that's just reminded me that i that my <laughs> version of that is uh that i always like some of the funnest painting gigs i've done have been at like a house party or something mm. you know where there's people same age everyone's drunk like people are kind of falling over me as I'm painting and it's super loud. The music's loud, but like every time you do something good, everyone makes a noise. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So far from the corporate world, you know, you're like miles away on the stage and everyone's in tuxedos and shit. <laughs> um, yeah. And that was the classic with me. And it probably will always be that way where I'd have times where I'm like, that's what I really like, you know, yeah, like I, yeah. I wish I was supporting, you know, incubus yeah. <laughs> in, I think uh, you're, yeah, you're the in the civic a... but you just the money the money side of things makes That's it a... difficult to i think you're in a very it. privileged place to be able to do it aren't you really is the thing and like i suppose that's what you're working for isn't it like that's why a lot of people might find notoriety in their 50s because all the rest of the time you know they've been doing jobs to get them through mm -hmm. and working yeah. on their own stuff but it has to kind of take a bit of a side seat because yeah yeah until it pays that's it isn't it and that's the I think that's always so, yeah. that's the struggle though isn't it with the you know it's like oh great i appeal to everyone oh god what does that mean <laughs> <laughs> like you know like yeah. that's probably you know it's it's a, why it's am a i so sad yeah, that's it. it it's a tricky one. one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I, so, I mean, with a lot of things, I, if I can tick off uh, one one person that I, you know, I, I I value their opinion more than some the people that I don't know who follow me. Yeah, mm. if, if I can just tick off someone who's willing to say, yeah, good on that. I'm like, right, I, I'm. I am happy. Like yeah, if someone yeah. I know who doesn't need to say anything to me says, I like that, or that's funny, mm. or that's good. When it's, you know, they just wouldn't norm that. That's often enough. I've realized it, not the amount of people, but sometimes the quality of comedy. Yeah, that's it. Isn't it? That is it. Yeah. Uh, well, it goes yeah. back to the old, you know, it's a bit of a full circle on the 25 prints thing as well, isn't it? Sell twenty five prints for three hundred quid a print, or sell a thousand yeah. for thirty quid. P, you know, yeah, <laughs> that's it. But it's it's that sort of um, <clears throat> equation that we're looking at, I suppose. Yeah. That feels like quite a full circle. It does. Yeah, man. We end it, end it there for this week. I don't know what. Uh, I'm going to chip away. I'm going to keep on with the portrait, and we'll show uh, that again next week. 
I'm going to do one that's um, five foot by four foot and send it to Dave and get him to put it up in his studio. <laughs> yeah, send it to him. You've won it, Dave. You've won it. Put it up. Put it in, put it in my bedroom. Massive <laughs> boring of Rob that he did. <laughs> Uh, Who's that? Oh, yeah. don't worry. Have you? Have, yeah, have you? <laughs> how's your pre-production going for your barn owl thing? At what stage are you like with well, that? Well, I've, I've moved on from them because they're um, they're a little bit of a way away, and mm. during this crisis, I feel a bit cheeky. It's not yeah. that far. It's, I'm still within my rights and all that sort of business. Yeah. But like the village is very. That's parking. It's like three miles away. I could walk there, but like because I've got all these other things going on, it's yeah. not really feasible. I have to drive. And there's lots of signs saying, oh, don't come walking in our place and give us COVID. And I just feel a bit like uh, whatever. So um, it's going to be uh, Tree Creepers. That's yeah. Next one. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's nice. changed a bit now. So I'm hopefully shooting it this week. Let's Should save some for the next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll chip away at that. And uh, I've got a few ideas for... I've been posting a bit on the, the old Instagram and stuff. So I've got a few more we you you gave me a good idea dave so i'm going to try and do that next week mm. the kazoo thing yeah yeah I'd, I, I think uh something in what you're doing hmm. that can only get more it can improve it's like, i think it's finding that mix between like the digital side and the sort of human yes. humanistic side that you start with like blowing a kazoo badly or just like really a tacky like what 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 and then jumping to a yeah i don't know there's something in there yeah and he's, oh, also, he's around with. lots of dictaphone recording this week yeah i have done nice. lots yeah yeah oh nice i've got a few that i'll uh, send through yeah yeah we need to get that project they're a bit I, I don't know like i'm gonna send you them mm. there's some that are like a bit out there and there's some that like should we get off? Yeah, this is like the outside yeah. the scope of this, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Thanks, right. guys. You've been yeah. watching no, my fine. creative 